Hello all, my name is Pritam and you are watching Tech with Pri. Welcome to my channel and I'm back with another video. And this is the third video of this tutorial series called Windows Server 2016. So in my last video, we have understood the concept of virtualization, hypervisor. We have also seen how to create virtual machine and we have created our first virtual machine and installed the Windows Server 2016 in it. So guys, if you missed my last video, so no worries. I'm going to put the link in the description or you can find the link right now to your right corner of your screen. Okay, so let's see what we are going to learn today. So first, we'll cover the different options for Oracle VirtualBox. So guys, as I mentioned in my previous video, there are some important things that needs to be uh, like cover in Oracle VirtualBox. So we're going to do it today. And we'll understand the what is IP address, public IP address, private IP address. And guys, this is very important, not only for this video, when we'll work on cloud also, this concept will require, okay? And finally, we'll understand the NAT concept, the NAT networking, very important, and how it works in our router, we'll see. And in the next video, we'll see how it works in the virtual machine itself. All right, so let's get started. So guys, here I am back in my Oracle VirtualBox Manager. And as you can see, this is the virtual machine that we have created last day when we installed the Windows Server 16. And now I'm going to create a virtual machine quickly to show you some options. I'm going to name it as test. And I'm going to choose the location as E because I have less space in C. I'm going to hit on next and it will ask for the memory size. So 2 GB is fine for me. So again, guys, I already explained in the last video before assigning the RAM to the virtual machine, you please check your own system RAM. All right. Click on next and it will ask to create a hard disk. We are going to create a hard disk. And now we have three options. So very simply, virtual box disk image or the VDI that has provided by the virtual box itself. Next, we have virtual hard disk that is from Microsoft and we have VMDK virtual machine disk that's from VMware. And I'm going to choose the VDI for this tutorial. I'm going to click on next. Now we have two options, dynamically allocated and fixed size. So again, like you are assigning a virtual hard disk, right, for your virtual machine. So the storage space will be taken from your own system. All right. Now, suppose I'm creating a 10 GB of virtual hard disk for my virtual machine. Okay. And I'm choosing the option dynamically allocated. Now, what will happen? So the 10 GB space will not be taken right now from my system. And instead of that, it will take a very little space. And the more you will like, store files and save files in your virtual machine, the more the size of the hard disk will increase like dynamically. Okay. And the opposite we have is the fixed size. So if, if you choose fixed size with 10 GB, so the 10 GB space will be taken right now from your system and it will be assigned to your virtual machine. All right. So I'm going to create dynamically and choose next. Now here I will assign 10 GB of space and hit on create. So guys, our virtual machine is ready. Now, if I go to the storage option and if I click on the test VDI, that's the hard disk we have created. So the virtual size is 10 GB, you can see, but the actual size is 2 MB. So that is what I was saying. So the next important thing that we have is network. So guys, we are going to cover the NAT today and we'll understand how NAT works in the, in our router. And in the next video, we will see how NAT and NAT network works in the virtual machine. Okay. So let's see what we have. Okay. So before understanding NAT, we have to understand what is IP address. Okay. So IP stands for internet protocol. Very simply, it helps in connecting your computer to other devices on your network and all over the world. So think of your email account, right? So we all have our unique email account. And when we send an email to a particular email address, so the email delivers to that email address only, right? It does not deliver to other system, other emails, right? In a same way, each and every device that are connected in the network must have an IP address to talk to each other. Okay. So it can connect other network devices in a local area, or it can connect over the internet or the wide area network. All right. 
So I hope the concept of IP address is clear. And this is an example of IP address, guys, 172.31.6.65. All right. So let's see what is public IP address. So it is publicly registered on the internet and your device must have public IP address to access the internet. So the very important point is that your device must have public IP address to access the internet. So guys who are watching this video right now, congratulations, you are using your public IP address and that's the reason you are able to access the internet and you are able to see my video. Okay. So whenever we try to access internet with our devices, so always we connect to a public IP address. All right. Now let's understand it with the help of a picture. Okay. So now we have our laptop and then this is the ISP. ISP stands for Internet Service Provider. So they are responsible for providing you the internet. So in India, we have many companies like CT, like Megbella, like Geo Fiverr. So these are the popular companies that provides you internet connection. Okay. From ISP, it connects to the whole world. So you can access like different servers and different web pages and websites. So now you want internet connection in your home, right? You will go to your ISP provider and you will tell them, hey man, like I need internet access for my home. So they will just uh, show you some chart where you have to choose a particular plan. So you have to pay more if you want high speed connection. Okay. And then what they will do after choosing the plan, they will just connect a wire from their ISP to your home. Okay, and they will also assign a public IP address to you so that you can access the internet. All right. So this is the function of ISP and this is how public IP address work. So I hope the concept of public IP address is clear. Now you can ask me one question. Say, okay, Pritam, I understand public IP address. So does it mean like all the devices we use? Suppose I'm having a mobile phone. I'm having a laptop. I'm having a tablet in my home. Does it mean that all these devices have separate public IP address to connect the internet? So this is a valid question. So let's see the next point and we'll understand it. So the IPv4, that's we're talking about the version 4 IP address. So IPv4 public IP addresses are limited. And this is the number that we have for public IPv4 address. So that means it is fixed, but the devices are coming every day. Okay. So every companies are making like mobile devices, laptop. So many devices are coming, but the public IP address is limited. Now, if each and individual like your, like your laptop, tablet, and your uh, mobile phone use separate public IP address to connect internet. So it's very obvious, like we are going to lose all the IP address, right? So this is a problem. Now to solve this problem, we have the concept of private IP address. So it is not registered on the internet and cannot access internet with the private IP address. So you cannot access uh, internet with the help of private IP address. So it's just the opposite of public IP address and used in internal purpose. And also it is assigned by the DHCP. So no worries. I'm going to tell you about DHCP. We have a separate video for DHCP. Um, that we are going to see in Windows Server when we'll configure the DHCP server. Okay. Let's see an example of private IP address. So 192.168.0.35. So this 192.168 you will generally find in your home network. Okay. So if we go ahead and go for the command prompt and you type IP config. And this is my IP address, guys. As you can see, it also starts from 192.168.0.150. So I'd request you to go ahead and check your IP address. So this is a private IP address. So basically, you cannot connect to the internet. Okay. So this is kind of safe also. So if someone knows your private IP address, they won't be able to do anything. All right. And now let's see what are the ranges of IP address that we have. So we have first the 10.0.0.0 and this is generally used in, in a large organization. So guys, if you are working in an IT organization, so you are generally find this IP address in your system. Okay. Then we have 172.16. Okay. And finally, we have 192.168 that I have already discussed that is used in the home network. Okay. Or the small network. Now let's understand how public IP and private IP works. So here we have a router. Okay. And 
the ISP has provided the WAD to you and the WAD is plugged into the router. All right. Now, this router has a protocol called DHCP. Okay, the dynamic host control protocol. So basically, it is used to assign IP address to all these separate devices that are connected to the router. Okay. So, so this is my tablet that is connected to the router. My laptop, this is connected to the router and my mobile is also connected to the router. Now, so this DHCP will assign a private IP address to your devices. Okay. So the benefit is, so we don't need to use the separate public IP address to access the internet, right? We have the private IP address and another useful thing of private IP address, like, like you and your friend can have same a private IP address okay as because this is safe and you cannot access internet you cannot do anything with the with this so it is possible to have same private IP address right that's the thing but the public IP address is only one that is assigned by your ISP and with the help of this public IP address you are able to connect to the internet only okay now you understand how private IP address helps to helps in this situation okay now there will be another question like, okay, so this is the private IP address. Fine. We have separate private IP address in our device, but how can we connect to the internet, right? How we can access this public IP address as this is a private IP address. And as I already mentioned, with the help of private IP address, you cannot access the internet. Now, how it is possible to access the internet. So to understand this, we'll move to the next slide. And we have the concept of network address translator. Okay. So we have a picture here to understand you better. So let's quickly see it. So we have a host computer here. Like this is the, your computer host computer and you have a IP address 10.0.0.1. So this is the source IP address. Okay. And you are trying to connect to google.com suppose and Google's IP is 200.100.10.1. Okay. Now you want to connect this. Now let's see the process. So first you are going through the, your private network to your router and router has the technology that is called network address translator. Its work is to convert your private IP address to a public IP address. Okay. All right. So now after converting this IP address, you can easily access internet and connect with the server. And then again from server, the result will come back to the router and router will convert your public IP address to private IP address and will send the result to host. So sounds good. So now here you can see we have a source IP address this and the destination IP address this. Now NAT changes the source IP address to the public IP address. Then it goes to the destination. Now here when the destination IP address from Google, you are like the google.com page is coming to your system. Now, this becomes the source IP address. The Google's IP becomes the source IP address. So the destination IP is now become your like your system, right? So it's very simple. The NAT again convert the destination IP address this to this, as you can see as per the arrow. So what NAT does here? So NAT converts your public IP address to the private IP address and then it sends to the host and you are able to see Google.com. Okay. So the concept is clear guys, how NAT work. So basically it just convert the private IP address to the public IP address. When you are requesting for a service, when the service is coming back to you, it converts the public IP address to your private IP address so that you can access the data. All right. So this is it for today, guys. So you understand the concept of NAT and how it works in your router. Okay. So if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you have any question, please come in the comment section and please, please, please share this video with your friends and families so that it can reach to a large audience. All right. And in the next video, we will see how this NAT and NAT network applies in the virtual machine. All right. And then we'll explore the Windows server. So thank you again for watching this video, guys. And do not forget to hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you. Stay safe. Bye. Thank you.